In this video, you'll be naming ionic compounds. If you remember, an ionic compound is a compound that has a cation and an anion that is chemically bound together. And cations are either metal ion or ammonium, which is NH4+. And an anion is a nonmetal ion or a polyatomic ion. So if you look at the periodic table and notice where the cations and the anions are, you have to notice where the, stair the staircase that distinguishing line between the metals and, and nonmetals, and these are the semimetals. And the semimetals tells you where the nonmetals and the and the metals are. So to the left of the semimetals, you have the metals, and the metals form cations. And that's one of the distinguishing characteristics of metals. So all those elements form cations. Whereas when you look to the right. You have the nonmetals, and the nonmetals are the ones that will form the anions. And so, if you have a cation and an anion, a metal plus a nonmetal, you'll form an ionic compound. The first ionic classification we're going to go over is metal and a nonmetal. A metal is something on the left side of the periodic table, and a nonmetal on the right side of the periodic table. If you have a metal, you put it name as is. For the nonmetal, you would keep nonmetal root, and you would change the ending to ide. Let's do some examples. Sodium chloride is right here, number 11, and according to this, it is a plus one charge. And chlorine is right here, number 17, it is a negative one charge. So sodium is in a plus one charge, and chloride is Cl minus one. So what you do is take this charge, put it down here, and take this charge, put it down there, since it's both 1, 1, sodium chloride would be NaCl. Let's look at magnesium iodide. Magnesium is right here with a plus 2 charge, and iodide is right here with a minus 1 charge. So if you look at magnesium, which is Mg, and it's a 2 plus charge, and then iodide which is I with the minus one charge. What you do is take this charge, put it down here, take this charge, put it down here, you would end up with MgI2, and that would be magnesium iodide. Let's take a look at aluminum oxide. Aluminum is Al with the three plus charge, and oxide is O with the two minus charge. So when you write aluminum, it's Al with a three plus charge and oxide is O2 minus. You take this charge and you put it down here, and you take this charge and you put it down here. So aluminum oxide would be Al2O3. Some of you guys may be wondering why I put down the charges from the different elements that we're looking at. But basically what I'm trying to do is just balance out the charges. So as an example, the sodium, this chlorine right here, sodium is a plus one, chlorine is a minus one. That's plus one minus one overall charge is always zero. So we want to make sure the charge is equal to zero. Magnesium is a two plus charge and iodine is a minus one charge. So since it's a two plus and minus one, you need two of the minus ones to equal in the opposite direction, the plus two. So that's why you have to have the two iodines so today, negative two, to get the magnesium two plus. On this one right here, aluminum is a plus three and oxide is a minus two. So you must have three minus two charges that would give you a negative six and two plus three charges that would give you a positive six that would equal to zero. So that's how your charge balances. Another thing that you must must know is that I'm very particular about floating charges. Well, what are floating charges? Floating charges are what I just drew here. These are floating charges. I will not accept floating charges in any of your problems. And if you have that, I will mark it wrong, even if you have it correct. So what you must do is you must erase all of your floating charges. When you're doing your work, yes, it's work, but it must not be there when you give me the answer. Now let's go the opposite direction. CaBr2. Ca, according to the periodic table, is calcium. So according to the rules, the metal is written as it. So it's calcium, C-A-C-I-U-M, calcium. And calcium usually has a plus two charge. 
This is a BR. See this two right here? They, where did this two come from? This two came from this calcium because this BR should only have a minus one charge. So when you name the non-metal ion, it's brom is the root of the non-metal and the id is the root ending that you must add. So it's calcium bromide. This two is not because brom means a diatomic. It is because the calcium came from a two plus charge. We have BAF2. If you look on the periodic table, BA stands for barium, and F stands for fluorine. But this 2 right here, guess where this 2 came from? This 2 came from the barium with the 2 plus charge. We assume that this barium would have a 1 underneath there, so that 1 would come from the fluoride, would be having a negative 1 charge right there. Let me reiterate, this 2 is not because fluorine is a diatomic. That too came from barium. According to the naming rules for metal and a non-metal, for the metal you write metal name as is, and for the non-metal you write the root, in this case is fluor, F-L-U-O-R, fluor, and you change the ending to ide, I-D-E. An important thing to notice, you'll have fluoride is an F-L-U-O. Please be very very sure you can spell that correctly. Now let's look at MGS. MG is magnesium and you write the metal as is. And S stands for sulfur. But sulfur is a non-metal so you keep the root and you change the ending to ide. So the root is sol and so you change the ending to ide. Magnesium sulfide. Let me go back to look at the charges here. Magnesium is a plus two charge and sulfide is a minus two charge. So in this case the twos cancel out therefore it's MGS not MG2S2. I will mark that wrong. Also make sure you don't have floating charges right there. I'd mark that wrong too. So that is how you name simple ionic compounds with a metal and a non-metal.